This video is about mastering the custom menu fundamentals in under 24 minutes. Custom menus may be one of the lesser known benefits of having a custom app. And the primary reason for a custom application is the word custom. We customize our toolbars. We customize our scripts. We customize our fields and our calculations we customize everything but what about our menu right up here there's some very strong benefits of using custom menus first off it is location 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 most of the time we have very limited real estate in this area and we can have toolbars and nested folder tabs but we have this little thin strip up here that if you think about it, look at all of these options that are packed in this area right up here that people are familiar with going to. And so it's not that it's completely unheard of, uh, but perhaps it has to do with memory problems. Where is the replace field contents is it under edit that is find and replace is it insert it is under records it's right here it's grayed out because we're not in a field but maybe we can't remember where it is so we just skip it and go to something else but what if we could fix that by using the third benefit going to multiple places you can create your menu so that you could put this particular command here and here and here and here and really here and anywhere you want in multiple places so that you never forget where it is. The fourth has to do with like the table view. So when we look at a table view, we have very limited real estate for buttons so it can be popular but we may be limited what we can do now you can go through this particular property setting and add all of these parts but it just doesn't quite look the same after we're done even if we make this bigger it just doesn't quite look right but we still have all of this menu that we could use in a table view that would be perfectly fine and work wonders. So that is our fourth one. And the fifth one is naming conventions. Perhaps you would want these to be named something different, maybe even a different language that FileMaker doesn't currently support. But your end users probably don't quite understand what some of these are. Maybe they never would use these, but they would like one that said customers or reports or websites, something like that. This comes down to some advanced features that maybe we spend too much time on the advanced parts and not enough on some of the fundamentals, but we can run custom scripts from any menu item. Any of these commands here, we could turn into a script. So if you want something different than just close, we can have it do all kinds of things as soon as we turn it into a Scripts and we do have this script column here, but we're kind of limited in what we can do, and it can get a little crazy. And end users may not necessarily think of this as the place to go. And you may have noticed you can assign custom keyboard shortcuts in the scripts area, it automatically assigns a number to the first 10. But after that, there aren't any, but you can assign them yourself in the custom menu dialog. There also is a bit of pseudo security, and I would never recommend this as your security, uh, technologically speaking, or technically speaking. But there are some things such as edit layout, or in the menu, we can go to layout mode, or even in this manage area, that as soon as we change our privilege set, and this is where it would be great to have a re-login uh, part of this menu, probably right about here, instead of closing and then opening to sign in again. I did actually make a script for re-logging in, because as a developer, you may use it frequently, and it's simply the script step. That's all it is. 
and we use it often. So now we can actually re-log in and I have a specific one that is read only. And as soon as we log in with that specific privilege set, now edit layout is dimmed out. We can't access it here. And of course the manage area has been dimmed out. So there's a bit of security, but you want to have your other security measures in place primarily. Those are some of the more advanced parts, but ultimately it is all about control, taking control of your customization. We have several options to do that. We have platform specific, file specific, layout mode user, and even custom specific because as soon as we turn the menu into our own scripts, we can pretty much do just about anything. Now there is a little bit of trickery with the timing or at least understanding it so you know how it will work. And the first thing with custom menus is at the file level. So if we go to manage and custom menu, oh, we can't go there because I have to re-log in. So I'm glad I have that particular menu function there. Otherwise it would take longer to do so. You can also go to custom menus over here in the tools. So we go to manage custom menus. You may notice at the very bottom here, this line has a drop down menu. If we had multiple menus where you could choose the default menu set when the file is opened. So that is the first time a custom menu can be chosen. The next one has to do with the enter layout. And you may have seen in the layout setup dialog, we have an option here for the menu set. So you can choose the default or, or any other ones that you've made. And you can also access your manage custom menus from this area. So layouts is another one, even if you have the file set at a different one. The third one is script driven. And here is where we have a nice little script step called install menu set. If you type in menu, you have two. You can show hide the menu bar or you can install a menu set. And if we had any other choices, we could choose that here or we can go to the manage custom menu dialog there and even change it to be used as the file default right within that script step. So there's a lot of power in that particular script step. And then the fourth one is at the privilege set level, which we demonstrated previously with the edit layout and showing what could be done just with the different privilege sets. But a lesser known part of the privilege set has to do with choosing how many of the menu options you get to choose. So if we go into manage security, we have full access here. We'll take a look at that. All of these are unchangeable because full access is in brackets. So we can't change anything about this. And there's this little option here, available menu commands, which full access has all. But if we choose a different one, and all I did here was uh, create a completely full access one by choosing everything, and then I chose all. So it is should be the same privileges as the full access. What about editing only and minimum? So let's just take a look at some of these options if we change into a different set. And I have made these buttons easier and quicker to make those changes for those privilege sets. But you can look and see there's quite a few with full access. We have everything under manage. We have uh, quite a few under view and edit has a few records, almost everything. But if we change this to more, the middle one, now how many records do we have? We got lost all but three. And the view, we lost several there. And of course, we cannot do the manage steps. But what about in the 
minimum part of the menu. Now what does that look like? Now we're down to two here and only a couple here. And of course the manage is still gone. So that one little lesser known step could make a change that you want or don't want in your menu set. And ultimately, again, this is about control. Now, in order to control custom menus, you really need to get a handle on the terminology. This is what's going to trip up the streamlining and the speed of creating these custom menus. So first off, we have the menu set, which is a collection of menu columns. So the menu set is all of these words at the top, kind of like headers, if you will, of each of these columns. So this is a column, this is a column, this is a column, and all these together make a menu set. A menu is a column of options. So this is the file menu, the edit menu, view menu, and so on. We also have sub menus, which are columns in a column. So we go to manage, we have the second column here, and sometimes we have a column and another column and another column. So this is a sub menu of this sub menu of this menu. And lastly, we have our item. This will be a single choice in a row that is not a sub menu. It can have a keyboard shortcut or it might not have a keyboard shortcut, but these are items that you can choose. Each of these are items. So if you get those down, then the steps to create a custom menu become very, very helpful. So let's walk through those steps very quickly. I'm first going to go through how a typical FileMaker developer would do it. You would simply jump right into the custom menu set. Oh, we have to change our full access log in so that we actually have access to those. So we would jump into custom menus and let's just create one and we'll call it test. And do we add something? We can put in the file. I don't, this is all the options that we have. This doesn't look right. Maybe we just hit okay and edit that just takes us right back so maybe it's under custom menus oh uh, maybe we have to create one oh there's file so i don't know there's some other stuff and it just gets confusing and then we just want to quit and say forget it i'm just going to do it a different way and maybe we go to the next step and actually look at some resources for it and so let's go to the resources uh, area, which there are only three little lines here when it comes to custom menus. And if you haven't seen it uh, done in practice, then they may not make much sense. But one thing you do have to have is the advanced toolbox checked. So if you go under preferences under this menu on a Mac, there's a little checkbox here that says use advanced tools. If you check that, or you may have to restart if you didn't already have it checked. If you're on Windows, you have to go to edit and preferences. And that's kind of a clue to the power of custom menus. So if we've gotten this far, we look at the resources, we probably give up and we ultimately lose our control. The actual steps to do this, we'll start at one, is to create the plan. You want to write this out, write out every word here of the menu and write down every option. Is it a sub menu? Is there multiple sub menus here or just one? And you want to put the items and think of the scripts or the script steps because it could just be a single step that is used. Create this plan before you put it into action and it will be much, much simpler. The second step would be to make sure you have the advanced tools checkbox. You could read through the resources, which I would recommend after you've seen this video. Number three is to create the menu item scripts, which if we look at our steps, you can see that is down here at the bottom. You actually want to work your way backwards. You want to start at the bottom and go up. And when you make your custom menu, and it will go much, much faster. So 
we're actually going to demonstrate this by recreating this menu set at the top. And in order to do that, we need to start with our script steps, our item uh, menu item scripts, if we have any. Now, they already have them listed in here, so we're not going to do a lot with that. The next step would be creating these sub menus, which they already have these put in place. And then we have the menu. So let's just jump into the manage custom menus. And we are going to start with the menu portion. We're going to create and here is file. You'll notice that all of these are the same as these up here. We have file edit like that view insert. There's view, there's insert. These are in alphabetical order. And then we have format records. We don't see format, but there is records. We don't have scripts or tools or window or help. So there's a few things here uh, that are kind of standard, but we're just going to pick file. And as soon as we get in here, we can see that we can actually rename it. And we'll just call this file test. And you can make comments on this to help document it. We have a menu title, which is going to default to that, or you can actually override that if you want, and we'll make it file fun. And you actually have a calculation dialog box right here. So you can make it literally anything that you want. We also have the option to install it at a certain time. And this one means true. You could type true, or you have a calculation dialog box. So maybe you want to install this when the account name is a certain person or a privilege set name or just if it's Tuesday or if it's afternoon you can make it anything and that will change when this installs you can have a mode determined here maybe you don't want it in preview mode or find mode and now we have our menu items over here and these should look very familiar if you've ever looked at file. We'll move this up so you can see these side by side. There is create new with a space and favorites and recent and hosts. And you can see these are labeled as some menus just like those are. But all of this is exactly the same as this. It's just replicated. So we're going to just keep this exactly as it is at the moment and we're going to do the same thing for edit so we're just going to double click that we're going to call this edit test and we'll leave these all the same at the moment and let's just see what we have so far if we create our standard modifiable and this is what i would recommend that you make to start with just so you can get some practice. And as soon as you have this practice, it's just going to be really easy. Now, everything is in alphabetical order and it has the square brackets first. So if we go down, we can see the ones that we actually made. So we're going to double click that or we can add and you can actually select multiple ones or use the command or control one if you want to select those. But we're just going to select the two that we made and you can actually reorder them here if you like and it tells you the display title so we're going to hit ok and we're going to hit ok so now are they here we still have all of these but if you recall we can now change this to standard modifiable and here are our two menus that we put there with the name and they added tools and help. Now the help has fewer than the standard one, but it's interesting that they have this FileMaker one, the tools and the help added onto our custom one. So you get to play with this however you like and add and subtract. We'll go back to the standard one for now. And we'll show you one last thing here under this which we can't add we're going to have to go to the menu part here let's create another part let's do the view part 
we'll add that in here and we'll call this view test. Oh, we wanted to add the re login part. So let's just leave that as view, but let's go to the file test. And right after this, I want to add the re login. So we click create. And right now it says unknown. So what happens if we just say OK and we choose that? It has this blank empty space because it doesn't know what to do with that. So let's go back in and let's look at this. And now we have options. We have a command or we can choose a sub menu. But if you choose sub menu, it's going to ask you to choose one. And we didn't make one yet. So you would have to make your sub menus first before you could actually choose them. Or you can make it a separator if you want. But we're going to stick with a command, which you can base it on an existing command and choose from something that's already here. But re login is not one of those choices. So we're actually going to create our own and we'll just call this re login, which you can use a calculation if you want to make it anything that you like. And then you can also assign a keyboard shortcut. And as soon as you do this, you just press the keys, whatever ones you want. So I'm just going to do command option shift Z and that is our keyboard shortcut. And then we want to perform an action. And this could be a single script step here if you had something specific that you wanted to do. But we already have our script made and we called it re-login and you can pass parameters if you like. And then you have the option to install here, just like you did up here. You can install the items based on who it is or when it is or any other calculation. So let's just click OK and let's click here. And there is our choice with our keyboard shortcut. So all kinds of fun things that you can do. You can jump in and even start with a completely blank menu and go from there maybe called customers and you just get to make all of this whatever you like it could be all of the scripts that you have set up uh, beforehand for the customer interaction that you want now that you have seen all of the fundamentals for creating custom menu sets then I would challenge you to take your application and create your own fun custom menu. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and check out our other FileMaker training videos or visit Productive Computing University for more advanced FileMaker training, including certification preparation. Thanks for watching.